you're ready to go again, and it's part two of the previous video, which was yesterday on, I think it was warm or moist. Whichever way, you're going to add to the Pilates core work, which is going to take you more into your sides. If you've just done the leg work, you'll be ready for that whole dialing down and concentrating the breath on the greater technique. First thing to do is make sure you've got your head cushion. Put your head cushion ready, and you're into lying on your back. Remember the setup. You'll have everything level. Make sure you've got your lines up against lines as well, toes level with the front line of your mat, and then lower the spine down. Once again, this will be methodical and slow. When you lie down, whenever you do lie down, another thing of laid down that must be right, you need to kind of reach your bottom up and away once you're lying down, and then create as much length in the spine as is possible. In keeping that length there, you're more likely to develop space and therefore move, room to move with all your joints. Have a quick nod of the chin, look down at the thigh bones, they need to be level with each other, which would suggest pelvis is level, feet are level. You start with your breathing connection, it's the inhale through the nose, and the exhale to relax and lose the anticipation that creates tension. Don't anticipate core workout, anticipate thinking and feeling what the breath does to your alignment behind you. So the inhale, you feel everything expands skeletally and fascially, lungs and abdomen, and on the breath out, you feel the releasing and melting away from tension, and therefore you get to discover your true um, alignment. Keeping that then as your mindfulness as the breath continuously happens, inhaling, and on the next breath out, you're going to do a pelvic tilt as the breath out empties. You use your pelvic floor for that pelvic tilt and your ribcage has been placed down. Breathe in into this imprint as you prep and breathe out as your ribs melt continuously. See if you can get your pelvis to move without the ribcage popping up. Big breath in again. Breathing out, the ribs will melt. That's ribcage placed up with the obliques and the pelvic floor will crane you to an imprint. We're going to say an imprint because it's the safest way for me to teach when I can't see what's going on. And then on the next breath out then, you're going to pull up one leg into tabletop, breathe in. Stay an imprint, one foot down, one leg up. Exhale, then you're going to curl and inhale back down. Making a tension to follow the breathing muscles that core connect you, rolling and inhaling back down. The more you can feel every part of the vertebral column in the lowering phase without the back popping up, the better the connection with your core and the more oblique abdominal eccentric work, that's the lowering phase you get. Exhaling, curl, stay and breathe in. Breathe out, pick one leg up, keep everything level and place the other foot down. Ready to roll up and down with this side. By doing one leg up in the air and one leg down, we're waking up the obliques. You are in imprint. That doesn't mean you've completely dragged your bottom under in some kind of pelvic thrust. It's that you've got that subtle connection with the ground behind the lumbar spine, but your sacrum feels relatively flat and you most certainly level from left to right. Exhale and curl, stay. Staying there then, breathe. Pull the other leg up, breathe in. You're going to take both hands behind your head. Breathe out, squeeze your heel, elbows together, lower one leg down. Breathe in, open your arms and pull that leg up. Breathe out, elbows come together, lower down, keeping imprint. Inhale, open the arms like a butterfly and up. Exhale and inhale. Breathe out, breathe in. If you slightly ease back so that when you come back to the breath out, you can add a little bit more flexion, that's not a bad thing. Inhaling, there's that slight lowering, but you're not letting your back pop off the floor behind you. Last time. And then place your hands down, final part of your warm up, 
Check your sitting in print. Breathe out and push the legs up. Now if, when you take your legs straight up, it goes into your back, that means your hamstring length isn't sufficient for you to take the legs up. So the push away has to be sufficient to make sure that the lower spine area doesn't overly stress. This is all about the abdominals. Now, it's like doing the 100 position, but every person has to find for their own unique place where the legs can go to without it going into the spine. You know it's in the right place, because as these legs go away and return back, it goes straight to the bikini area. Your final sequence is to add the curl. Breathe out, slide your arms forwards. Inhale, watch the knees come back. Exhale, and watch the legs come back. If you pull the inner thighs tight together, and you don't overdo the legs, you'll get a complete rehab of stabilization of the pelvis and the lower back. The stability for the lower back comes through pelvic floor and internal abdominal obliques. Exhale, drawing up and in on both ends. If you get tired, start to let the legs lower and lift in bent. Two more. Remember I'm keeping imprint. One more. And you're warmed up in your trunk stability. Next position, you're going to go on to hands and knees. Find your all fours place. Still be aware of the red hot sensation going on in the midriff if you've used your core appropriately. We're going to do thread the needle. So you're going to take your right hand away and crook your elbow, breathe in. Exhaling, slow motion, turn the head and lower the shoulder down in the direction of the floor without hinging the hip any further back if you can help it. Huge inhale into your ribcage rotators and back you come, exhaling, change sides. Inhale the other side, breath out, start to turn, so it's rotational side work, down you go, lowering the shoulders to the floor, breathe in and then breathing out returning back again. I'll show you from the sides. You're going exhaling, thread, under, 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 breathe in, and then breathe out. Now if you're really stiff in the, in the um, thoracic, it may be that you need to lower the hips down to ease the movement pattern, and that's fine. Listen to another cue. The arm that stays still as it were, not threading under, the elbow bends. You need to use your breathing because the breathing is the only way of mobilizing the upper spine, the facet joints, the shoulder placement, and that's really what this is all about. Last time, exhaling. Inhale to create the space, exhaling to return the power back. Your next position is going to be in dart, so just lie yourself down, check both knees are level, and lay the abdomen down keeping straight lines and length and reach. Squiggle and wiggle the thighs away from the pelvis. Yesterday we did dart with um, shoulder sliding, so we're going to go straight into it rather than constantly teaching from the basics. Pelvic position, pubic bone is dominant, feet are reaching, I can sense the end of my mat. Um, I've suddenly got cramp into my arches for some reason, so I'm going to let that go. Have your um, arms reaching, palms to the ceiling. Breathe out then, pelvic floor, don't grip the bum, and pull your shoulder blades together, your nose is hovering, breathe in and pull them apart. Breathing out, shoulder blades slide, hands go to the sides of the thighs, inhale and lower, legs are lengthen. We're gonna take it then to alternating um, turn. Breathe out as my shoulder blades pull together, I'm gonna to turn my head and look over one shoulder as it were, inhale, I'm gonna turn and look down. Breathe out, turn and look. Now if you feel sick lying on your front, the chances are that you're not managing to core stabilize the whole of the front of you. So you're almost pushing your belly into the floor and crushing your internal organs. Let that not be what you do. Two more like this. Inhaling, one more. 
and let that go. Have your arms reaching and imagine you have a tennis ball and your hands shoulders away from the neck. Breathe out then and with both legs to lengthen behind you. We're going into swim basics and lower them down. Breath out, melt the rib cage away, keep the pubic bone dominant, the legs reach, the hamstring connects, the bum's not squeezing. Breath out, legs. Inhale and lower. Now you're going to do one leg. Let that right leg lift. Let the left arm lift. Pull the left arm into the side of you. Then lower the leg and return the arm. Breathe in. Set up the environment. Core. Left leg lengthens. Pubic bone dominant. Right shoulder armpit connects. You inhale. You breathe out and return. Exhaling. Leg. Diagonal arm, reach and return. This takes huge energy to do it accurately as it was intended in terms of repairing the connection between the shoulders and the pelvis. And your only connection is through the core muscles going from armpits to rib cage to hip bones to pelvic floor. Now add a turn of the head, inhaling. Single breath, exhale, turn the head, inhale, exhale. So you're linking together almost part of dart and into a modified swim. Once more. And allow that to be. Put your hands under your shoulders. Pull your sit bones back and stretch and lengthen in the opposite plane of movement. This is like a transition moment. We're going to go into sides now. Make sure the breathing in and out um, hydrates and lengthens the lower back and the back of the pelvic area. And then bring yourself ready for your side lying. We did sides yesterday and we did what I call the kind of hard back book position along with oyster or clam, whatever version you want to see it as. Remember, sideline can be done with your arms straight ahead, but if you've got shoulder issues or you're lacking stability, you're better off getting a great shoulder alignment here and having your legs reaching. First things first then, gap between the lower back, sorry, the lower waist area that you're lying side on and neutral pelvis, legs, thighs level, feet level. We're going to do our double leg um, balance, so you're exhaling, Pelvic floor near the spine. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feel for your rib cage and float the top leg up. Not very high. Breathe in. Breathe out. Underneath leg comes up. Breathe in. Breathe out. Point the toes and lower down. We're going to do four slow mos of this lift lift. So it's exhaling to lift. Breathe in. Exhale to second leg lift in the thighs. Inhale to reach the toes. And lowering back down. So you can lift. Remember, it's not Rosemary Connolly as in big leg lifts, it's not an aerobic move, it's a pelvic stabilization in side lying that you're trying to achieve without faking it or making it appear that you're doing it when you're actually not getting what you need. Pelvic neutral, pelvic floor, near the spine, underneath leg with the breathing muscles, not with just your leg muscles. Point the toes. Now we'll do both together. So exhaling. Up you go, flexing, pulling your toes to your nose. Breathe in, point the toes and lower down. Breathing out, up you go. It's as though your ankles are rolling and reaching. So on the breath out, inner thighs pull tight together. Abdominal wall, tightens from hip bone to hip bone. Waist stays off the floor on the side to lie, maintaining neutral side lying balance. Head heavy. And down. Exhaling, inhaling and lowering. Check for any rotation. I can feel myself starting to wobble backwards. Okay, this is your last one. We're now taking it to hip hitch. This is where it gets interesting. The leg lifts and now you hitch. So the waist has lowered down. I'm now closing the gap between the floor and my waist. And the second leg drives up and then both legs go down. Inhale, moment, breath out, lift the top leg, 
And on your breath out, imagine you're pulling your hip bone up, sucking it up into your oblique area. You'll know you're doing it because this oblique here where my fingers are works really hard as the underneath leg load lands in the oblique stabilizing. So you lift, exhale, hitch. All frontal oblique here. Exhale, adductors, inner thigh of the underneath leg lifts. Inhale, and everything lengthens away again. Exhaling. Breathe in, gather more energy and power for the inhale. Exhale. Refuse to rotate, roll backwards, and away you go. You'll start to get side bottom and internal oblique here. Got one more. Lift. Hitch. Breathe. Exhale, lift the underneath leg. Feel it, breathe, and lower it down. Now can you take it into hip hitch and hitch. Use your breath out, pull the hip bone up. It's harder when you've got two legs lifting at the same time and you might find your range reducers. If you do need to have your hand on the floor, that's fine. As long as there's um, all of the activation here, inner thigh and inside this hip bone here, then life's going to go well for you and you will develop a change in the relationship between your side sequencing postural rehab. Last time. And let that go. All right, from there, we're going into all fours. A, a, a kind of a very basic move that we've done badly often. That's where you slide from all fours, your right leg backwards, and slide your left arm forwards. You're going to hold and breathe in and out, making sure that every part of you feels light. Not one part of you should feel as though it's overly working. Inhaling and exhaling. The sensation of a balancing with all of you is what you should experience. And then slide back again. Show you from a different position. Breathe out, you're in neutral spine. Slide the leg away moving the head cushion out of the way, breathe in and slide down the long way. Think of swimming that we did lying on our front and this is a very very similar thing. The whole trunk stability system being challenged to lightly connect. You can't force this because you're off the ground so you can't muscle away. The only thing you can do is kick your leg up and get everything in the wrong place but to have this sense of floating and the breath creating core connection You'll feel some tricep back of the upper arm, you feel lats, you feel abdominals. There's just this lovely lightness and return back. I'm not going to flow with that. So you're going to exhale in, feel the breath out and pinpoint big toe, index finger, inhale and return. Exhaling, slowly lengthen. Keep the crown of the head reaching forwards. Inhale and slow motion return. The amount of people that use their back to do this is quite intriguing. The activity is to invite the front of you to stabilize a neutral spine. So that as your limbs do a diagonal reach away, every part of your midriff and your armpits and the back of the pelvis to some degree support you. Without the Pilates connection, you'd simply work all of your back extensors and therefore there'd be no reorganisation of spinal stabilisation and pelvic connection. Okay, this is your last flow. And let that go. Take your pelvis back. You're ready for the other side of side lying. So find your head cushion. Then find the side view. And it's the straight line version of side line. I might look a bit strange because I'm trying to make sure I can be seen in the camera. Your underneath arm, shoulder, remember, here, here, um, but you don't be, you've got a gap here. From here then, check you've got both feet on top of leg, leg, heel, heel, toe, toe. Gap underneath the waist where you're lying and breathe. 
Exhale, core connect, the waist off the floor, massage your line, top leg lifts. Inhale, breath out, underneath leg closes the gap. Inhale in and lower. Breath out, lift. Inhale, lift. Point your toes and lower. Two more preps where we're doing single leg, single leg, and lowering both together. One more. Feel the oblique area? Feel the inner thigh. It's light. It's a bit like the last activity where there's nothing big about this, but there's everything connected. You're now going to go up with both legs together and lowering down on the inhale. I'm just checking that I'm doing what I think I'm doing and you should do the same. So as you go up, legs at the heel, abdominals are core connected there, point the toes and lower down. Pelvic position stays true, not brace, it's fluid, but you're not rolling all over the place. As you draw up on pelvic floor, you draw your legs up. As you you're lowering legs down. Breath out to use pelvic floor. Double leg lift, oblique connect. Inhaling away and down. Exhaling the ribs. Pelvic floor ribs, leg to side lift. Inhaling. One more. Breathe. Point the toes and lower down. Keep the lower leg down for a moment. You've now got your double your leg hitch. So lift the top leg, breathe in. Breath like this that you even know those sequences exist. This is your last one. Go one, two and three. And then to finish off this whole series, exhale, hitch and hitch and hitch. Check your still lined. Underneath leg feels as though it piggybacks the top leg up and last two. Last one, and let that go. Okay, once again, can you believe that that's all we have time for? The best thing you can do, people, my friends, is find yourself resting off into this position of child pose version S, and you stay there while I turn off my equipment before I get into my um, rehab one-to-ones. Breathe deeply in and out where you are, Stay really well, stay active, and see you tomorrow. I hope we have a little bit more fun tomorrow. I'll probably create something a little bit more um, light-hearted rather than demand, demand, demand. But well done for those in the room. We've had a great time, haven't we? I will see you all very soon. Hello, Michelle.